In today's episode, I talk with Coach Jordan of the College of St. Mary women's team. If you like our interviews, I would truly appreciate it if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave a comment, uh, tell your friends, or if you're more of a podcast person, subscribe on your favorite platform because we're on Google, Apple, Spotify, and all the other ones. And don't forget to follow us on all the different social media channels at discover underscore CS. Thanks. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Discover College Soccer. Today, I'm lucky enough to be joined by Coach Jordan Ursick from the College of St. Mary's. Welcome, Coach. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So uh, let's, well, sorry, I said St. Mary's. It's St. Mary. Sorry, Saint I did. I, I'm sorry. I, I knew. I, as soon as I said it, I'm like, I put the plural when I shouldn't have. Um, They're weird about that in these St. Mary's schools. I'm, I, I, can imagine I've got <laughs> my wife's name is Mary my mother-in-law used to be a nun so I, I get it yeah. um <laughs> and I went to the Catholic University of America so go figure but anyway um let's talk a little bit about the College of St. Mary uh, a lot of folks may not be familiar with it there in Nebraska nice NAIA program so let's talk about recruiting to to your program you know what what are some of the 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 key tournaments, events, things you you go to to make sure you're you're finding a, the the latest crop of recruits. Yeah, uh, I do a lot of my recruiting based out of the Midwest. When I came in and took over this program, it was there had been a lot of turnover um, since I had been a player. So we're talking almost seven eight years of just new coach every year. And I came in and said, I really want to focus on the Midwest and keep it local. There's a big Omaha soccer scene for sure. Um, so I spend a lot of time at, in terms of tournaments, things that are close by. I also love to go to, to high school games and high school state tournaments. I think that's unusual, but um, I think they're a really great celebration of uh, community and, and uh, teamwork and all those things. Like there's nothing like a high school game and high school state tournament. Um, I also coach in the ECNL RL, so I'm at those events a lot and uh, like to find players in those sections. Um, so I'm kind of all over. I don't do a lot of traveling out of the Midwest right now. I'm hoping to do that, go to things like Surf Cup and um, going to Phoenix, those kind of things. But I really wanted to build this program close to home first and build out of there from that. Okay. Well, do do camps factor into your recruiting at all? Do you do camps on site or work other camps? Absolutely. Um, we have actually the exact uh, soccer ID camp is on our campus this weekend. Oh, okay. Um, so I do some of those third party camps. I get invited to ID camps from, you know, the bigger schools in the area. And I try to go to those and see local talent. Um, we have quite a few showcases um, either out of Kansas City or the Twin Cities that I like to go to as well. Okay. Well, whether it's at, at camps or these local tournaments or high school games, even, what would you say is kind of your, your hierarchy of things that you're looking for in a player, whether that's on the field stuff or off the field stuff? Um, I, I pride myself in being a small town kid that we just were taught to work. I was a multi-sport athlete and I think that shows in our team. Um, I'm always looking for body language and um, work ethic off the ball especially that's where I'm watching like I, you, a lot of players the difference between them is not what they can do when they're on the ball how they finish how their first touch those kind of things it's the little things in those moments where maybe not anybody else is looking how are you carrying yourself when your team is down how are you carrying yourself when your team needs a goal are you that person that's pushing or are you that person that's coasting or holding yourself back um the, the little things like, are you cleaning up your water bottles at the end of the game? Are you having an argument with your parents? How do you compose yourself with your teammates? Um, are you wearing a captain's band in the club game? Those little things, um, you know, being in NAIA school, we're looking at small club kids, small town kids a lot more. So um, so the difference there to me is, is your composure and your personality and, and your maturity. Um, that I'm looking for in our program. I love it. Love it. Well, in terms of, you know, your, your roster, you know, is there a, is there a roster size you're looking to hit? How does, how does that kind of factor in? In our area, NAI, there's a JV varsity. So we generally carry about 40. Um, I, 
I like to tell people, and I, I mean it, that we do it a little bit differently. Um, our scholarship system isn't built to be on an average, like a lot of NAIA schools are, where our JV is um, about filling rosters and getting numbers. To me, I run it a little bit more like a high school, where we have freshmen in our program now who will be starters, significant contributors as seniors, but they're behind seniors now. And so this year for them, they play JV, they're playing 90 minutes a game, and now I'm expecting them to step in ready. But when I took over this program, it was so small and it was so um, just kind of uh, just not what I wanted it to be. And so we had to grow and we had to grow a little bit quickly, but I also had freshmen stepping on the field immediately. And now we can do, um, we can give them time to grow and, and learn the game without having to be full send immediately. And then there are freshmen that they're ready, right? We have freshmen that do start and that play significant minutes, but they were ready to begin with and they had to get there first. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Well, it, one of the questions that parents always have is, uh, all right, you mentioned scholarships. What's this, what's this going to cost me? Right. So, yep. uh, I'm not holding you to hard numbers here, but can you just give me an overview of what, what kind of the cost of attendance looks like in terms of what scholarships and other financial aid are available there at the school? For, uh, for us, one of the big things we say is, um, well, I say a lot is we are big on giving opportunities to, to young women that normally wouldn't have them. So we do have academic and athletic scholarships. They stack, which is not common um, at our level. A lot of times you have to pick your athletic or your academic money. For us, you get to take both. Um, and if you're on the roster, you get some sort of money. We don't do walk-ons. Um, but also if you, we have opportunities for, for a lot of people. We have a documented opportunities. Um, if you receive Pell, we heavily financially aid those students so that it's very inexpensive. We try to meet the EFC of the family in those situations. So if, you, if you're receiving Pell, your EFC is less than $5,000 and you'll pay less than $5,000 to go to school here um, and to live on campus. Um, in terms of like schools, our size, we're about half the price. So our, our tuition is twenty to $23,000 nobody pays that much um but schools around us of similar size in the midwest are closer to 40. um so we took uh, a few years ago my first year here the school took an initiative to take a major um tuition cut of 33 percent we went down to 20,000, and it goes up a couple hundred dollars every year but it's definitely not hiking the way a lot of other schools do and they take a lot of pride in that um and like i said we have a lot of programs we have uh two academic scholarships one is for nursing the other is for stem so science technology engineering math your chemistry biology math that are essentially full scholarships or completely full scholarships um, that are targeted towards uh, minorities first gen students um, pell students undocumented etc like they're very much we as a university are very much looking to give opportunities that um, they not always have, and, and my team is full of that. My team is full of girls who are, are if I hadn't gone here, I wouldn't be going to school. Because I was in the same boat. Somebody took a chance on me a long time ago and said, you know, I was the oldest of a lot of kids. and My mom was a teacher and, and there wasn't a lot of money. So um, that's something I'm passionate about and the school is passionate about as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, well, let's talk a little bit more about the school. You know, I can click around the website and learn a lot, but, you know, give me some some insights. You know, what are some awesome things about the school maybe I won't find on the website? Um, well, I'll start with just our majors. We're a health sciences school at our core. Um, we have some of the best nursing program in the country, occupational therapy, physical therapy, uh, if you start here in physician's assistant, you start here as a freshman and you can graduate from here in four, five, five to six years with a master's or a doctorate. Like that's, it's pretty cool. And they take a lot of pride in that. So those programs are really, really good. Um, and I also say that you can play too. <laughs> play and get an athletic scholarship. So bonus all around. Um, I had a lot of friends who, you know, went to PT school or OT school and they did four years of undergrad, and then they went to four years of physical therapy school, and here you're done in five and a half. Um, so those are those are kind of our core. We're also like people say, I say like we started out as an education school, so our education was really good. But the things 
that aren't necessarily in those also include like Omaha is a big city. And so we are almost dead center Omaha. We're right off the freeway that goes right through 72nd. It's basically middle of Omaha. Um, so we're kind of at the crossroads of a bunch of major, you can find three malls within walking distance kind of thing. But we are, um, we're kind of like a little city within it. So we are just off the road enough that you have to get into it um, and it's safe. And I live around the corner, a safe part of town, uh, a beautiful campus, all of those things um, that make it kind of a good fit if you want a big city feel, but also you don't want to have classes of a thousand people. Um, I used to teach at the University of Nebraska and I say like I had classes of 500 students and I never ever once I don't remember any of those kids but I taught here and I can tell you all of those kids names and that's important and that's that's a small school feel that you get but a lot of small schools are in small towns and this is not a small school in a small town this is you're right in the middle of the metro um other than that just that kind of like carrying all of those things, but they take a lot of pride in the academics here. And so we have people that walk out of here very prepared for their future. And so if you're talking like psychology or business, it's that same thing of you're going to do your internship in the middle of a metro, you're going to have opportunities off this campus and people will make sure that you have those opportunities. No, that's good stuff. Well, you mentioned academics, um, you know, what kind of support does the school provide to help help students you know you mentioned a lot of maybe first generation students whatever they're coming into this tough academic environment uh especially in health sciences or stem or something like that and they're playing sports so how, how do we make sure how do you guys make sure that, that that they're successful on both both things yeah we have a student success center um so they have a swipe system where you can come in and there's tutors uh i i talk a lot about my experience at at nebraska where people were paying me to get tutoring by the hour. I was charging 25 bucks an hour and making good money doing that. Um, here there's tutors. Um, it's a 24 hour center. There's people. We also have like a full staff of people who are there checking grades. We have a whole system that I pull up on my computer where I can check a student's grade at any minute, which I do once a week, just go through. Um, and then we have people in support places that care and then they're calling me and they're calling the student and they're calling the teachers like, why isn't she going to class? Why isn't she passing? What can we do to help you? And a lot of times it's, it's not that the kid doesn't want to be successful, right? Like my, you know, my mom is sick or my car broke down and there's only one car or my sister is struggling or I'm having mental health, pro you know, all of those things come into play more so than, hey, I just don't want to do this because you don't go to a school this size just to play sports, right? You go to the school to get an education. And so there's a lot of people around. Our team specifically, um, because we have such a big team and I have such a great group of upperclassmen, we have required study hall hours. So we don't do it all together because there's just no way <laughs> to get everybody in schedule. So we have little pods and we have... Um, kind of my best grades, upperclassmen. So we have three nursing groups and they're led by a junior or a senior who, who's already gone through that. And they meet for a couple hours every week, all year round to make sure everybody's doing well in classes. And then same thing for um, our kinesiology, exercise science, occupational therapy students, and same with our education. And there's just their pods and, and they, they have to meet and they have to do, do it together. And then I, I like I said a couple times now like I used to teach um, chemistry and so I have a math and science background so I have kids that come and sit in my office and we do homework together I have a few girls who come in and they have hours where they just hang out in my desk right in front of me and I do work over here and they do homework and if they have a question then they ask you know that small town feel small school feel is um, very alive here there's a lot of people that want them to succeed no, oh, that's fantastic. Well, let, let's talk a little bit more about the soccer side of things. Um, you know, in terms of uh, your roster, you told us what you got. So how many staff do you have to help with that? What role does everybody play there? What's your staff look like? Yeah, so there's me. I am 
the only full-time person that makes it tough, but I have a great staff and of assistant coaches that are with me. So I have um, three assistant coaches, one who runs our JV program and is there for everything. He's been fantastic. His name is Senna. And then I have um, a second kind of stipend assistant who uh, mainly travels with us to games and then gets to practice a few times a week, but is is kind of our second communicator. I like having three people to bounce ideas off of. And then because I'm a goalkeeper and I value that position a lot, we have a third assistant who does just the goalkeepers. So um, she makes time throughout the day uh, a couple times a week to be working with them specifically. And she has roles throughout, but that's really her main thing, I think. Um, when I was a younger coach, I thought I can coach the team and the goalkeepers and you can't. <laughs> so, so she is very specifically there to just make sure that um, our goalkeeping group is, is on top of it and knows what's going on. Oh, that's great. Well, how would you describe kind of your style of coaching and the team style of play? Um, I would say that I tell kids when they come and sit in my office that I'm going to take the best players I can find and we're going to fit around what they can do. Um, I like the group that we have now is very big on off the ball movement. and How can we um, change positioning and move around to confuse defenses? We spend a lot of time, okay, if I move here and you move here, what is that going to do to them and how can we disrupt what other people are doing? Um, and so it, it makes it a challenge for other people to kind of deal with us. Um, we have a range of, of players that just, um, come, like I say, come in and work really hard. So we have the fast wingers, the fast outside backs that kind of can be dangerous, but we also love to be able to control the ball in the middle of the field. So um, I think my style has always been, we're going to have kind of a system, but we play different formations. Um, we play different formations in a game of just like, you, I'm going to put you in a situation to be most successful. That's my job as a coach. Um, and then if you're going to come in and work hard, we're going to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Well, in terms of, you know, the off season, because, you know, yeah. we're here in the winter and you get to look towards the spring. What What is your typical off season program look like uh, in your non-traditional season? Um, I usually do this like, in a whole year so can I start with the yeah go, go right ahead move out of it okay go right ahead. so I I don't know this is how I like to do it at this point so we come in we move in a few weeks before school starts usually the first week of August um preseason is about two and a half weeks of just two a days a lot of time um in our conference room watching film drawing things up making sure everybody's on the same page team bonding all that stuff um when school starts we're once a day, like most people, because we're a health sciences school, I have to work around their schedules. So we have girls that are in clinicals from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, luckily, we're the only team that uses the field, so we can be on it whenever we want, um, which is super, super nice. Um, doesn't happen most other places. Uh, so that we're practicing once a day. Varsity is generally playing two games a week. Once we're in conference, it's Wednesday, Saturday, and JV is playing. Um, usually Sundays or Thursdays once a week. Uh, and then lifting three times a week, we have a full-time strength and conditioning coach. So they're doing all of those things together, plus their study hall hours, um, plus meetings. We do, we've done outside speakers, we've done team bonding, we watch film, whatever, right? So we work together a lot. Um, our season is over now. So right now, all they're doing is just lifting. Um, with the, uh, the, new, the strength and conditioning coach for our staff is new. It's one of our big steps forward. Um, and so we said to them, like, you need to be lifting now, getting healthy, making sure you don't take two months off to come back in the spring and reset yourself, right? Um, so they'll do that until we come back for winter break. This time of year is just getting grades going make sure you're doing the right things, um, stay healthy, get healthy, et cetera. Uh, once January comes around, because we only get 24 weeks with them, and so we get about 12, 13 weeks in the fall, we get 11 or 12 in the spring. Um, the first few weeks are just captain's practices. So um, a new, name a new set of captains at the beginning of the spring season, and they're doing captain's type practices, right, drills, 
Uh, we have a brand new, I didn't say any of this, uh, fitness center here that we just built. It's a little over a year old, so they play futsal in there. Um, and then once we get uh, once we get into the weeks that I can start working with them, we also have an indoor turf facility that's right down the road uh, that most of the schools or most of the club teams like to use. But since we can go during the day, we have a little bit more freedom of time. So we're in there a couple times a week. We're playing futsal a couple times a week. And then they're still lifting and doing study hall. Um, and then once we get outside, because it's Nebraska, usually around spring break, we're up to four times a week. Um, and then we play on the weekends. So we get three spring days with that as well. So, and then summer comes, um, I give them basically the month of May off. Um, we usually end right at the end of April with all of that May. Do your finals, take a break you know, get healthy, whatever you need. Um, and then because, like I said, we're so, um, we're very Omaha dense, probably 75% of our roster is from Omaha. And then a lot of girls stay here over the summer. Um, we are doing open fields two, two times a week and lifting. And yeah. And then you start all over again. And right? then you get to right do it all, all over circle. again. <laughs> it's like Groundhog Day over and over again. But it's never the same twice somehow, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> It's always just a little bit different. That's right. That's right. It's what keeps it interesting. Well, yes. Coach, we, we covered a lot of ground, talked about a lot of different things, but uh, I always end these the same way. And that's what didn't we cover? What else did you want to talk about, whether it's about the school, about the recruiting, about the program or anything else? Uh, I give you the, the last word. Um. Oh, gosh, that puts me on the spot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, you know, things I would love to talk about uh, about us. And our program is definitely that even though we're a big team, um, I built, I say that because it is, it's true at this point. Like I, I picked these girls and, and built this program around people that I really trusted. And I make the joke, I have two little kids and I say, if I can trust you to babysit my kids. You can be on my team. <laughs> they don't, I don't ask them to babysit, but um, you know, I have, I have little kids and I want that the people that are in this program to be people they can look up to. And then in this, in the same regard, I want to be someone who can show young women, like you can do it all right. I'm, I'm 32. I have two little kids. I have a husband and a life and, and I didn't have a lot of role models growing up to show me what that looks like. And so I take that very seriously in that regard too. Um, so this team, our, our program is, it feels like a family and it feels like my family at this point. Um, and I, I think that they, they care a lot about each other um, on and off the field. Um, the other things is it, that, you know, our, our school would want me to say is, like I said, we have uh, all brand new facilities. Um, when I got here, what is now our athletic building, which is in front of me was a slightly above dirt soccer field <laughs> that I played on. Um, and I grew up in Wisconsin and there's not a lot of turf fields in Wisconsin. At least there weren't when I grew up and um, they were all really ratty and I was a goalkeeper. So there was a big hole in the six. Um, mm -hmm. So now that's a building and we have a, a brand new turf facility, locker rooms, all of that out there. And then in here, a brand new, weight room, um, training room, all those things. Um, so it's, it's very nice and, and we like it a lot. We're very thankful. Um, it was all donor funded. So people believed in this program and, and made that happen for us. And, and we're thankful for that. So I think that's all I got. Awesome. Well, coach really appreciate the time. Uh, wish you the best of luck here uh, as you start the next phase of, of, of your season Thanks and, and, uh, and, <laughs> If, uh, if, if you get to the convention in Philly, swing by the, yeah, uh, the table because we'll be there and uh, love to meet you in person. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks awesome. for having me. Thanks, Coach. Have a good one. You too. <laughs> you don't want to miss the 2023 United Soccer Coaches Convention in Philadelphia from January 11th to the 15th. 
This convention is the largest gathering of soccer coaches, administrators, and fans in the world. Only at the convention can you attend sessions crafted with your coaching level and desired topics in mind. Presented by world-class educators, our collection of over 200 lecture sessions and field demonstrations will offer every coach something to bring back to their own training sessions. Come learn from Amanda Vandervoort, president of the USL Super League, Anthony Flores, youth technical director of the Philadelphia Union, Becky Burley and Brett Ledbetter of What Drives Winning, Laura Harvey, head coach of OL Rain FC, and Dan Abraham, sports psychologist. More presenters will be announced in the months leading up to the convention. Visit www.unitedsoccercoachesconvention.org to register before the next price increase.